woke up early right outside Cusco, loaded into a strange van, and headed into the mountains of Peru. Today, we're gonna to be exploring a place known as the Sacred Valley. But first, we've got to stop and make some new furry friends. <laughs> What's up guys? Good morning. We are here outside of Cusco. We are on an amazing tour today. We are super excited. This is the Sacred Valley of Peru. It's the rich indigenous historical center of Cusco. Amazing archeological sites, amazing agriculture llamas and alpacas. <laughs> we are actually in a llama and alpaca farm right now. They have probably a hundred llamas and alpacas. <laughs> and it looks like there's an escapee <laughs> right here. This guy's not even in his cage, but look at his coat. Hi, you look so warm. <laughs> you look so warm. Oh, see you later. So our tour guide was actually explaining to us the difference between alpacas and llamas. And alpacas are basically the smaller ones with the shorter ears and they have a thicker wool. Wooly mammoths. Yeah. <laughs> and then the llamas are actually the taller ones and they actually look more like a camel, which makes you kind of understand that they're like related to the camel. Here in Cusco and in, in Peru, we've seen so many llamas and alpacas. They're used for their wool, their meat. They're a huge source of industry they, here in The this farmers area. even use them like donkeys. They carry items <laughs> yeah. and supplies for them. Kids have them as pets, they're yeah. everywhere. <laughs> It's crazy, and this is like one of the capitals in the world for alpaca clothing, with like scarves or sweaters or gloves or hats. They make everything out of alpaca wool because it's extremely warm. You can tell, these guys are very insulated. <laughs> Let's go check it out. So these animals that are here behind me are called the Wanako. They're actually the oldest ancestor of the alpaca and the llama, and they're actually a North American camel. They're the descendants, or they're the great grandfathers of alpacas and llamas. Their faces are like a mix between a kangaroo and a giraffe. It's so weird. But uh, this guy definitely needs braces. I can smell your breath, buddy. The, the way oh. how you can call them is <laughs> Yeah? Oh, who is this guy? I revised my statement. This is my favorite llama. <laughs> Can we keep them? No. <laughs> Doesn't Frank want a little that puppy? That thing will get enormous and it'll oh, fill up the yes. entire van. Yes, he would. It would be amazing. Absolutely be not, amazing. young lady. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm calling the Guanacos. Is it working? Yeah, come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Pink. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh man, you're adorable. You are just so cute. Oh, Baba. So we're here today on a really cool tour by Alpaca Expeditions with an amazing tour guide, Jose. <laughs> Jose, do you want to say hello to the vlog? Hello. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? 15 years. 15 years? Oh, yes. Wow, and you said you're, you're from the area? I'm from the countryside. From the countryside yeah. here? Jose was born at over 3,000 meters? Three th over 3,000 meters, you're right, yeah. Oh, man. I'm feeling it and we're only at like, what are we at, 10,000 right now? 13,000 feet? Hey, 11,000 feet. Oh, we're at 11,000 feet right now. I can definitely feel it. Jose over here is just just chilling. Yeah. Feeling good. <laughs> hey, look at the guinea pig. So delicious. Have you tried? No. Is it good? It's delicious. So there's four big pens full of guinea pigs right here. And in the States, you look at guinea pigs and they're like a cute little pet. And you probably wonder. Why is there, you know, 25 guinea pigs hanging out in this pen next to the alpacas and the llamas? It is a delicacy. Here in Peru, they eat guinea pigs. Ooh. 
Jose was just explaining to us that these certain types of pots, the ones with the big, the big bulbous bottom and the long skinny necks like this, all the way over here, these are just made by the Inca. So these are an actual Inca pottery and they were used for holding poisonous things or hallucinogenic plants and liquids that were used for ceremonies. If you see a pot like this that has the long skinny neck with the big opening at the top, you gotta know that it's an Inca pot. Callie found her new favorite hat. What do you think, guys? It actually looks really good. Yeah, it's really yeah. warm. And I'm freezing, so it feels great. <laughs> cool, let's get it. How much is it? Expensive. It's so soft. The alpacas have really soft, really warm wool, and then the baby alpacas have the warmest and the softest wool. And the guy was saying that like a scarf of alpaca, of baby alpaca wool can be up to like $350. How do you call a llama or an alpaca? What's the noise? <laughs> <laughs> That's my best. <laughs> Wow, it's a very interesting looking. Its name is Wali. Wali? Wali, yeah. <laughs> you can touch, it's hot. It's hot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, it's oh, leather yeah. skin. Remember they're using these heaters. <laughs> wow. Oh, yes. What does it feel oh, like? Yes. It feels like the bottom of your foot. <laughs> yeah, it's like leathery and hot. We've been seeing these types of dogs everywhere, all over the street when we're driving. They're completely black and completely hairless, except for on the tips of their feet and on their snout and on their tail. Their skin is like black leather. It's very disconcerting to see, but this guy Wally is so friendly and so cute. And they run so hot. It's like a hand warmer. You like put your hands on them, it like warms your hands up. It's really cool. It's crazy. <laughs> Like we were saying, the Sacred Valley is basically this spot where a lot of the water settles, where there's rivers, where it was really easy to grow and cultivate food. So the Sacred Valley is actually home to all of the Incan culture. It's the capital of the Incan Empire. And there's all these different archaeological ruins, not just Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is a really big, really famous ruin or archaeological site. However, there are a ton scattered throughout the Sacred Valley. We are at the Pisac archaeological site today. Some of the really unique things about this site, Pisac, is that it wasn't actually all built by the Incas. It was built by older generations of different civilizations, and then the Incas found it, improved on it, and made it even better. They had a rock quarry that was close by, so they harvested all of these rocks. It's a seven hour walk. Harvested these rocks, walked them all the way over here, and built all of these terraces. The Incas built all these terraces to grow all of their food. So the Incas would grow way more food than they needed, and then they would use that food to bargain with the other indigenous cultures so that they could help control them. Because if we haven't made it clear yet, the Incas were basically a civilization that ruled all of the other indigenous cultures in this area. It <laughs> like makes my, makes my soul smile to be here. It's like so exciting. I think we're gonna go check out the urban sector. So over here in this mountain, you probably don't notice anything crazy, but <clears throat> if you look really close, there's a lot of really big holes in a lot of the cliff side. And this is actually their cemetery. So they had two different ways of burying people. The regular people, they would remove all their organs, kind of like the Egyptians, and they would wrap them really tight, and then they would stick them into these holes. But the noble people, the people that were higher up in society, they would actually remove all the organs, mummify them in the fetal position, and then bury them inside these holes. A lot of the holes are open now because grave robbers came and took all the artifacts and all of the valuables out of them years and years ago. But it's just crazy to think that not only did they scale these cliffs somehow, 
but they did it with their dead and buried them in the cliffs. Well guys, we made it. We made it to the top of these archaeological sites. This is the urban neighborhood. We're in downtown right now. We were really worried about the weather today and so far, I mean, look at this. It's unbelievable. Don't jinx us. That's true. That's true. <laughs> All right, guys, that is gonna do it for the Pisaka archeological site. It's Pisak, but they call it Pisaka, the indigenous people. How do you say it, Jose? See you later. Pacarincama. 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 That's how you say hasta luego or see you later in Quechua. Our next stop is a really cool market. Then we've got some other ruins and then... Wait, it's not food next? I think our next stop is food. I hope food. <laughs> and then I think we're going to a market. Okay. Either way, we'll pick you guys up when we get there. Okay, I was wrong. We're not doing food first, but this market looks amazing. Let's go check it out. We've decided to do all of our Christmas shopping in one fell swoop. I'm sorry for people that are watching this that are receiving this as a gift. We're kind of giving away the surprise, but we found an amazing deal and we love supporting local people, local markets. We're getting some alpaca blankets. Cool. We are taking over the YouTube channel. <laughs> we just made this woman's day. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is too much. <laughs> We've been talking about getting some Christmas gifts for all of our family and friends while we were here in Peru before flying back to the States for Christmas. And we just found exactly what we were looking for and uh, I hope everybody at home likes it. Muchas gracias. Well guys, we actually had to rush out of the market because here in the Andes, when it rains, somebody just turns it on and it goes absolutely nuts. The saying, when it rains, it pours, was created here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we got rained out of the market, we hurried out of there, we jumped back in the van, and now we made it to a place called Incalicious. <sighs> this food looks amazing. They have like a chicken curry type dish, they've got a bean salad, a pasta salad, ceviche, green beans, a quinoa soup. Lunch was a success. What we couldn't finish, Luca was able to finish. Thank you for uh, helping us out there, Luca. <laughs> How do you feel after lunch? Good. I didn't suffer the altitude, I yeah. suffered the sauna. If, yeah. I don't know if you can we're, see. We're all so sunburnt. You match your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> now we need to visit another archaeological site, right? Oh, really? Before the train. I thought we were yeah. going straight to dinner. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> straight to bed, you know, we <laughs> jump in the hotel. No, we have another archaeological site oh, in wow. Oyaba, Oya... Oya, Tam Oya Tetambo. Oya Tetambo? Mm -hmm. And then we'll go... Choof choof! Choof choof! Okay, let's go. It's 4.30, the sun is setting. This place closes at 4.30, but they've, let n but they've let us in because we're here with Jose and he's the man. We're at the Oya Oyante Tambo archeological ruins. And this particular location is really unique because there's one valley in this direction which leads to another set of ruins and multiple sets of ruins into the jungle. This direction is where we came from and that's where the Pisac ruins are. And then there's a third valley that goes this other direction and that leads to Machu Picchu. My favorite part already is that this is their food storage all the way over there. Those buildings over there are really, really windy. It's always really windy and really dry here. So they would harvest all their food and store them in these stores. Multi-hour hike at least to go get like food to bring back here. So that's crazy, but. No instant gratification in this culture. And also Jose was just telling us that this is a place where the conquistadores came and destroyed another one of the temples. And all these rocks that are down here at the bottom that are carved in certain shapes were part of a building that used to be up at the top. I think we're gonna head up to the top now.
I just love these ruins. Makes me wish I was Indiana Jones. An archaeologist with a whip cowboy hat. <sighs> Maybe one day. Now we're heading down to the train station. This is supposed to be a special train that takes you all the way to Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu, baby. <laughs> Ready to jump on this train and head to the most famous ruins in the world. So we made it on the train to Aguas Calientes, the town right outside of Machu Picchu. And the train itself is gorgeous, really clean, really nice. Very luxurious. Uh, we started moving, and I don't know if you can tell by the camera shake, but it's a little bumpy back it's actually here. It's the train that's shaking, the camera's <laughs> holding still. We've just got to endure this for about two hours, and then we get to a really nice hotel where we're going to spend the night. You guys are probably wondering where Frank is, and he is with a new friend, Sharon. Sharon's taking care of Frank while we go to Machu Picchu. She's been sending us pictures all day. He's having a blast playing with her dogs, having a great time. He would not be enjoying this train ride. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he'd be freaking out. <laughs> we'll see you guys in Aquas Caliente. <laughs> Hello. Was that the jerkiest train ride you've ever been on or what? Is it always like that? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's always like that. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Welcome to Welcome to Aguas Calientes town. Yeah. It was very exciting, we'll just say that. We made it. Out of the hotel. Buenas noches, guys. See you tomorrow morning. Ciao, ciao. Four in the morning, we have to be at the bus station. So, so what time 3 30. 3.45 downstairs? 3.45 downstairs. Okay. Okay? Sounds yep. good. Sounds good. Buenas noches, amigos. Good night. See you in a ciao, few ciao, hours. Ciao. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as all of our stuff is scattered around this hotel. We'll be here for like six hours total. <laughs> <sighs> At least we made it. We took a hot shower, feel great. Need to go to sleep ASAP because tomorrow is a big day. We gotta get up at 3.30 in the morning to get in line at four to catch the bus at 5.30 to get to Machu Picchu by 6 a.m., which is supposedly sunrise. We're really excited, but it's gonna be crazy. We hope you enjoyed seeing all of the ancient ruins and archaeological sites today in the Sacred Valley. We had an amazing time exploring, thanks to Jose and Alpaca Expeditions. Yeah, Jose is an amazing dude. He's going to be with us tomorrow at Machu Picchu, and Alpaca Expeditions is also going to be hooking up the tour tomorrow. So There are a ton of tour companies to choose from when you come to the Machu Picchu, Cusco area, and Alpaca Expeditions is incredible. They use all local guides, local porters. They are completely 100% sustainable and give back to the community as well. They're an amazing company. If you're coming to this area, I highly recommend you check them out. We'll have their information in the description below. Thanks again to Alpaca Expeditions. Thanks again to Jose. Thanks to you guys for watching. And we'll see you guys tomorrow at Machu Picchu. Adios. <laughs>